Look it down there. What's that, guys? Hey guys, what's going on? This is Jason with the JW Class VW, and we are back in the garage, back working on Goose and that turbo build. You know, the one that is underneath the, the uh, well, my old Gore-Tex jacket. <laughs> She's underneath there, the uh, <clears throat> 2287 build, guys. There was some confusion on if it was a 2180 or uh, 22 something or other, but it is a 2287 turbo build that we're doing. Turbo, where are you? Get up there. <laughs> and you guys can see that I am making one heck of a mess right now. We're gonna get into it just in one second. I'm doing a bunch of cleanup today. Getting these cylinders prepped for rehome. Actually, I'm doing the rehome. Get them prepped for a break-in because we're replacing all of the rings, all of the uh, total seal rings that are on the pistons, these 92 thick wall pistons. Yep, we're replacing all those rings because yeah, I busted uh, one of them when I was pulling them out. So you can see, we've got a new honer getting these pistons all set up. So right at the intro, guys, we're getting into this content. We're we'll talking about what's going on. We're gonna probably do the cylinder heads today too. Get those all cleaned up and ready for install. See you in a second, guys. Oh, baby. Yes, welcome back. What I got here are the, the new uh, tires and wheels for Goose. And I kind of like the way that these look. And they have some venting here, a little bit of venting to help out with the brake staying cool. But they're 15 inch wheels. And I went ahead and went with these, these Pro Contacts. These are ZR rated 205 50R15. Pretty awesome slicks. Well, they're not slicks, but they are, they are definitely gonna give us some more traction on the road. And that's what we're looking for, you know, when it comes to all that horsepower. I went ahead and just took the old Pro Contacts. These are the Pro Contacts. What are they exactly called? They have like a special name. Sport, there you go, Sport Plus. The uh, Continental Pro Contact Sport Plus tires. Yeah, I'm probably gonna burn these suckers up real quick. They'll probably last me about a month <laughs> before I gotta get a new set. But uh, these are going on the rear, of course, and then I'm doing the 165-60 R15 on the front. Will it stay like that? I don't know. We'll kind of have to see how everything handles and how it feels while I'm driving around. What do you guys think? Comment below. What kind of tires are you using on your super build, your monster build? This is the hone I went ahead and picked up. I got this from Summit Racing. I'm not sponsored by Summit Racing, but I got this one from Summit Racing. It's a 240 flex, and it's three to three, uh, it's a three and three quarter inch in size. And that's working out perfect when it comes to honing these cylinders. And you guys can see, 
It looks pretty good cross hatched up inside of there. All right, and yeah, we're making a mess. Ugh. But you need to have a drill that does 60 RPMs or more. So my electric DeWalt here does that. And you got to make sure you keep these stones all nice and oily up. And that's what I got here. I got a valve cover full of some 1540 weight, which is working out really good when it comes to holding these bad boys out. Oh, what's this? This is my little jig I made up to kind of hold this. It's just a two by four with a cargo strap and a couple screws holding it into the bench to keep the cylinders from jacking around and moving on me. Because this isn't like a long block or some Chevy... Chevy long block or something like that to where the cylinders are just all kind of sitting there easy for you to do. So I need something to hold these VW cylinders in place. Man, that cross has turned out great. Fantastic. Cool. So after I get these done, I got to clean them up really good, spray them down with some uh, degreaser or some carb cleaner, and then take them upstairs and wash them out really, really good. And we should be good with that. I'm also going to be doing the cylinder head cleanup today. Yep, these DRD cylinder heads. I'm going to be cleaning those up and getting them prepped. And I may even do some of the lapping. I'm going to go ahead and put some valve lapping compound on the cylinder here and lap these into their cylinder seats on the heads. Good stuff, guys. Put you into the tripod and let's get to work. Okay, guys. So, like I said, it's just a little cargo strap here to kind of hold this in place. Now, one of the things that you want to make sure that you do when you're operating this drill and kind of plunging in here is to kind of pay attention to your plunge rate. You want to have a nice steady motion, and you want to make sure that the drill is in motion, that you, you've you got this kind of like in operation as you're sticking it into the cylinder. You don't want to like just stick it in there dry because then you can kind of create like a line a dry line when you do that so you don't want to do that and i can kind of even see some of the old cross hatching that was in here before so it's like goes and shows you how new these cylinders are but uh yeah here we go plunge it in and then towards the end you'll see that i kind of speed up and that's something you want to do too it, it, that's what kind of gives you those cross hatches that you're looking for and this is my anti-splatter protection <laughs> To, to help create maybe a little less of a mess. Maybe, maybe just a little, little less of a mess. Da -da 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 -da. All right, so 1540 and some people, could, uh, you could probably even use like Marvel's Mystery Oil or something like that too. You just wanna have a nice good lubricant coating in here. You don't wanna just dive in there dry because then you're gonna have all kinds of problems. After you get done with it, though, you want to make sure you clean it up really good. The uh, Total Seal rings, there's this, like, powder uh, stuff that you apply inside of there. And based off the color that it turns, I think it's like a greenish tint, it'll tell you whether or not your hone is good enough. So I'll be doing that once I receive it. I ordered uh, some stuff from More, More VW. That's where I ordered the Total Seal rings from. And, yeah, they're not here yet. They're supposed to be here next week sometime. So let's go ahead and oil this up a little bit. If uh, you like to stay clean, you are going to hate this <laughs> because this is just uh, about as messy as something can get. And that's just, just how it is. That is just how it is. Here we go. So go ahead and pre-start the drill. Nice, nice steady stroke. And about 20 or 25 strokes inside. You are removing material, so you don't want to go too much. And then towards the end, speed it up. Uh, 
And that should be it, guys. Let's take a look. All right, let's move the shield back. Get some light up in there. Uh, I'm going to take a clean rag through it here in a second, but we just want to kind of just use something to catch most of that crap out of there. And I can bring you guys in and we can take a look at the, the crosshatch, see what it looks like. Oh, it looks good. I can see it already. There we go. And take it upstairs after this and then uh, use some nice soapy water, hot soapy water and clean these off good. Oh yeah, man. Those work really good, those stones. All right, get you guys out the stand. I don't know how well you can see it in there, but the cross hatching is really nice. Looks pretty good to me. Yeah, I do like it. A couple more to go, guys, and I'll bring you back and we'll start talking about these cylinder heads. See you in a second. What is that? What is that over there? Hey guys, Jason, we are back. It is the next day, Sunday, to be more specific. Uh, and you can tell because I'm wearing different clothes. <laughs> and it's a little colder. It's actually kind of in the 40s tonight. And I know that's not cold to you guys, but it's cold where I am. It's that time again in the video where I ask you to don't forget to like, share, and subscribe, guys, and hit the little bell thing off to the side for notifications. I think I've got like 70% of you guys that are watching that are not subscribed yet. What's that all about? <laughs> now, back to the video. Tell you guys what, this bench was super dirty, and I spent quite a bit of time last night cleaning up the heads and getting them, you know, at the state they're currently at. Really shiny. I think I told you guys that I thought these things were, um, you know, ceramic coated. The valves, well, they're not, but that's okay. I'm gonna bring you guys down a little bit closer and show you kind of what we're dealing with here. I used uh, just some engine degreaser. You guys check that out, this gunk e uh, engine degreaser. I got that from one of the auto parts places. And I left it on overnight, and it did a really good job of uh, finishing up the cl deep soap cleaning of this. But honestly, between my wire brushes, I got quite a few of those in there. And then I have a soft bristled brush, brush, soft bristled brush that I used. Where's that at? Oh, this one right here. These bristles on this, these metal bristles are pretty soft, and they did a great job. Let me bring you down closer and show you what we got going on with the heads. Okay, I know you guys like these close-up views, so here we are. These are some pretty nice chambers. I'm gonna go ahead and probably figure out what the CC is on these so that I have a better idea of what my compression ratio is. You can tell that uh, definitely spent some time cleaning them up. You know, over here, I'll show you guys kind of like a picture or video of what they looked like before. But I wanted to have them all cleaned up and get the crap off of there because it's just a good idea while I got it apart. Right here is where the copper gasket seals. I pulled the old ones out. There's a couple right there. And I've got new ones that I picked up already. I ordered those from more VW as well. Clean up all the seats down here for the rubber uh, grommets or rubber, rubber gaskets that go on the pushrod tubes. I also have to clean those up as well. But I'm going to be taking those upstairs with the pistons. I finished pulling off all the rings on all the pistons. It's got this tool right here to help me out with that. Yes, uh, no more jacking up my rings. If you guys are curious about this tool, check out the description below. I will link it there. I think I got these from Summit. I don't get any kind of kickback on that, but hey, if you're looking for some, check it out. Cool beans, man. So yeah, there's the heads. They look great. Super clean. I'm probably going to go ahead and pull the valves out and just check out the guides just to make sure they're not jacked up and I don't have any loose guides. But uh, yeah, going to do that. On my uh, Potter rockers, I did find an issue on one of them here that I'm going to try to clean up. It looks like maybe a push rod tube came loose or something. Bring you guys in close and show you what's going on with that. Oh, yes. What the heck is this cramp? Yeah, it looks like it got beat up pretty good. And this little seat right here. And got eight up as well. So I'm going to reach out to Potter and see if I can go ahead and get myself a new a little foot here for this valve, for this uh, this roller rocker. Because I don't really like that very much. Which, once again, puts me behind schedule. 
That's no bueno. But yeah, we can't leave that like that because look at that. Get you guys zoomed in really good. That could definitely cause some issues, man. It looks like I got beat up really good. I'm not too worried about the rocker itself. I can clean that up. That's superficial. But this right here, yeah, we we gotta we gotta replace that. I can't uh, can't be having that. But that's why you inspect everything, especially when you when you get a, a used engine. Everything else is looking really good. I did leak down tests on these. Kind of let it sit for a couple hours and it held no problem. Leak down test is where you. Fill this up with some kind of fluid, and all I did was just use the degreaser, fill it up with degreaser, and then uh, left it there for a while. And uh, as long as you get no leakage down through your exhaust ports and or your intakes, intake ports, which would be the front of the head, right here, as long as you don't get any fluid leaking down through there, you're good to go. You don't want fluid leaking down through there. What that tells you is you might need a valve job, and uh, we don't want that. But cool. DRD racing. Somebody's banging around outside. <laughs> All right, guys. Let's go ahead and clean off the bench a little bit and talk about what we got going on next. All right. Okay, guys, it's time to talk about doing some lamping and lamping on your actual cylinders, this surface right here, to the head itself and the surface right there where we'll be putting that copper gasket in and installing it. What this is going to do is help out with matching the surfaces both on the both these make sure they're well matched to each other maybe not completely 100 percent flat but they should be pretty darn close to it so you put a little valve lamping compound on here and then you're going to rotate like this and match that surface together and it's not you don't have to do it a lot just a little bit you kind of rotate this way and then that way and then it, and then what it does is it strews, trues up the surfaces together so let's go ahead and do it real quick, and I'll show you what I'm talking about. And what it is, it's kind of got a grittiness to it, almost like uh, sandpaper. And you got to make sure that you remove this stuff, that you clean up your surfaces really good after you use it, because it can jack up some valve guides or whatever else it gets into. So, yeah. Let's make sure we keep it clean, guys. And you'll be able to tell... Once the surfaces have been matched up, because it'll be a little bit gray where you go ahead and do this at. Gray as in like uh, gray in color. But I'll bring you guys in and show you that here in a second. I'm going to time lapse this portion, guys, so enjoy the time lapse. <laughs> little bit of cleanup and I'll bring you guys back and show you what it looks like. Hey, let's go ahead and take a look and see if you guys can tell the difference. <laughs> I can see you're pretty good. I've already cleaned out the chambers and the surface really good with uh, some carb cleaner, just like some carb cleaner you'd pick up from AutoZone or whatever. And uh, you can see the grayness where it's been kind of like leveled off. Looks pretty good. Looks pretty good. And if you look at the cylinder itself, the surface looks really good, nice and smooth, all matched up, ready to rock. Hey, man, you can really see those cross hatches now. Sweet. Before and then after. Okay, guys, so let's talk about the valve guides and what we're looking for when it comes to if they're good or bad. So up and down motion is what you should have. No duh, right? You want to go ahead and see if you have any side play, like if you have any motion in the valve. And we have, like, zero. So that's good. Let's go ahead and flip it over, pull the valves out, and take a look at the guides, look down through them. So don't watch them. You don't want these banging around. Pull out our intake valve. You gotta be careful. You wanna make sure that uh, that you don't scrape up your guide in there. Exhaust one comes out, no problem. The actual uh, intake is, oh, there it goes. 
right here, these little grooves right here. Sometimes you have to take some sandpaper and kind of shave those down because just because the valve operation, what ends up happening is these get swollen a little bit. Bring you guys a little closer so you can see. These, these grooves right here, they will get swollen and they'll catch on the inside of the actual valve guide. So you might need to take some sandpaper, a little file, and shave those down or, or uh, take a little bit off of it to be able to get them through the guide without damaging the guide. All right, I'm going to pull out the other side, then bring you guys over and show you what the valve seats look like. So we can take a look and tell if there's any kind of problems there, which since we did the leak down test already, there shouldn't be any problems. But let's go ahead and pull out these other two, and then I'll bring you guys right back. So this is what we kind of consider a broken down head. Once you have all the valves removed, you can take a look at the seats. You can look at the valves guides themselves. You can kind of look down inside of them to see if there's any issues. This should be smooth board. You know, you get a light down inside there and you can see inside. It's also, you can take a look in your ports like these. This is heavily ported because of the turbo motor with the, with the big valves and everything. You want to make sure that you keep your valve springs and seats and keepers all together because they wear together. And these springs are set up individually, like per valve. So a couple of these had shims in the base of them, and I'm sure that shim is to go ahead and offset the spring pressure to make sure it's where you want it to be. So they all matched up. Look at how tight this is here, this little space there. I've never had valves, like a set of heads that were so big valved. And these are pretty large. Very cool. So I have to do the the lapping on this side still, and then I got to clean up these ports a little bit, at least around the the uh, valve seats. The seats look fine. Everything looks pretty good. I just want to go ahead and take uh, some solvent and clean up the uh, the seats to make sure that everything, all the crap is out of there. Yeah, all part of the cleanup, guys. Very cool. Yeah. Well, guys, that is going to do it for this weekend and uh, working on the turbo build. A lot of prep, a lot of cleanup going into everything. You know, whenever you've got stuff to do, like new rings and like boring, <laughs> rematching some surfaces on some things. There's, there's different ways. You know, every engine builder uh, has their own things that they do when they build an engine, and so do I. So, yeah, that's it. A lot of cleanup, a lot of prep. We're going into getting this engine back together, and I can't wait to fire it up for the first time. I know you guys are just as curious as I am how this is all going to go. If you have any questions about some of the stuff that we worked on today, check out the description below because I'll link, you know, the wheels, the wheels that I got, the tires that I got, all in the description below, guys. Or you can hit me up in the comments with uh, questions there as well. Don't forget to join the Facebook group or the Instagram if you haven't done so already. Lots of updates always on there as I'm kind of doing things, yeah, that aren't part of the normal videos. See you guys in the next one. This is Jason from JW Classic VW, and have a great rest of your weekend if you have Monday off. <laughs> if not, watch, uh, watch a video. <laughs> See you guys soon. This is Jason. Bye-bye.